I'm humbled, I'm honored to stand before you as the next head football coach at the University of Tennessee. Uh, I want to start by recognizing my family, uh, my wife Allison, who I love so dearly, uh, who's sacrificed uh, so much of her goals professionally and personally to stick with me through this process, stick with me through some tough times, uh, and has been so supportive. Uh, and incidentally, uh, I'm going to get in big trouble for you calling my son JT uh, because he's John Taylor to his mama, not JT. <laughs> As most of you know, I, I grew up in this, in this conference. I grew up in the SEC, uh, and it, it didn't take me long as a, as a youngster to realize that Tennessee was the essence of college football. Uh, even as a young kid, when you're watching the team run through the tee, when you see the checkerboard end zones, uh, and of course when you hear Rocky Top, your thoughts uh, on Derek Dooley and what's transpired over the last well, 15 months? You know, what, what I've had an opportunity to hear from, from the players uh, is that they love him and they love what he's trying to do. They love what he stands for. And uh, I think as a, you know, as, as a former player, of course, you know, that's what you want to hear, you know, and, and, and when, when guys love to play for a coach, uh, it makes it easy to go out and get wins. So uh, we're trying to bring that tradition back and hopefully Coach Dooley can help us do that. Derek Dooley inherited a Tennessee program that was reeling in the wake of Lane Kiffin's sudden departure after just 13 months on the job. Kiffin created more controversy than he did anything else, and that was before an exit which ended up giving the 41-year-old Dooley both the opportunity and challenge of a lifetime. What did you find when you arrived here considering all that had happened before you got here? <laughs> where, do you, where do I begin is, is the better question. You know. Uh, it's probably unique to any situation that anybody's ever been through in college football because you had a program that had such great stability and such great tradition of winning. And then all of a sudden, the change that had happened over the last 18 months, having three new coaches in 18 months, uh, it was, it was a, in a bit of a mess. And um, I think, though, we were able to get our hands around the program and settle everybody down. Uh, because it was unique. Our, the fans here who have been so supportive and they're so used to stability had now been thrown into a little bit of a chaos set, uh, state. What was the biggest challenge right out of the gate? The fans or the players? Well, no. It was actually recruiting because when I got the job, we only had two weeks left in recruiting. And I knew everything I did those next two weeks would really impact the program the next four years. Uh, what I was able to see is what kind of players he's trying to surround himself with and the coaching staff and going on campus and seeing what top quality human being uh, that Coach Dooley is. That's what Tennessee needs and deserves, and uh, I'm, I'm so excited about what he brings to the table for our, our university. At Louisiana Tech, Dooley inherited a team that had gone 3-10 and ten the year before and in two seasons led the Bulldogs to their first bowl win in three decades. What are some of the things you were able to do there that you hope to do here? Well, I think it's starting with uh, putting some values in the program on how the players compete uh, and how the team represents the institution. Before you even talk about winning and losing, I think it's important to talk about who we are and what we represent. So far, I've, uh, I've enjoyed what Coach Dooley has had to say and kind of his philosophy to things. And, uh, you know, certainly everybody's got to give him time to establish himself and establish his principles. But the things that he and I have talked about and sort of his way of doing things, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And I think he's had a great mentor, certainly in his dad. And uh, you know, Nick Saban, he's kind of a Coach Saban disciple, which I think is a great mentor for, for all college coaches today. He's doing a heck of a job in Alabama, and I think Coach Dooley will get us going in the right direction. In the wake of the struggles this season, what changes need to be made for next year? Well, we're going to make a lot of changes. Uh, as, as we always do every year, we're going to evaluate where we uh, can do better as coaches, and we certainly have a lot we can do better as coaches. Uh, but more than anything, we have to start shaping our team uh, to play as a team. And, you know, 70% of those guys that were out there uh, were in their first or second year of the program. And those two classes have to come together and form a team. They've not had an offseason together. And so in many ways, we weren't the kind of team that we needed to be, and it showed against Kentucky. Uh, and when I say team, I mean playing together for each other, for a common purpose. Uh, and we just haven't had that 
investment from those guys because they hadn't been in the program very long and they certainly hadn't been in it together. And we're going to go to work right away on building this team the right way for the future. I know a lot of you guys have heard uh, Jim Stockdale, uh, prisoner of war, Vietnam. I don't know if you've read about him. Uh, eight years he was a prisoner of war, eight years, and tortured, beat down. And, they, you know, of course, everybody, when he gets out, he survived it. And everybody says, well, how did you do it? Um, and very solution-oriented the whole time he was in there. Uh, and they say, well, who, who didn't survive? And he says, the optimists. You know, and of course you go, what? You know, because you're told, hey, everything's going to be okay. But what he said was that the optimists would say, I'm going to get out by Christmas. And then Christmas would come, nothing, I'm, I'm going to get out by Easter. And then Easter would come, well, I'm going to be out by the summer. And then the summer would come, and their spirit would get broken. And they die because they'd quit. And so the point of it is that you never lose hope. You never lose faith in what the end of the story is going to be. You know, and I told the team that. Never, I don't, I don't have any doubts that uh, Tennessee is going to be what Tennessee expects to be. Um, but we also have to confront some tough, brutal facts that we're facing right now. And uh, is it going to be tough? You dang right. Uh, but you're presented with a set of circumstances every day, and you can't change what's happened in the past. You can't worry about what might happen. You can't say, well, this would happen if that. Can't do any of that. You got to deal with the circumstances you're presented with, and uh, go after it the best you can. And that's all you can do. And never lose faith in the end of the story.